Hi. Today's tutorial is going to show you how at New Canaan High School we use Destiny as the portal for all of our e-content, including websites, um, unlimited simultaneous user browser-based only ebooks, so the e-reference collections from ABC Clio and from Gale, and also for individual distributors and publishers, um, sort of smaller scale th uh, content providers. Um, one of the things I'm going to overlook is how to actually integrate Follette resources into Destiny because as we move forward with the upcoming versions, you'll see that, that the integration is so seamless for Follette content that there's really no need to use this mechanism to integrate your resources for your learners. So the example I'm going to use today is from Marshall Cavendish and there are a few things that you need to have in place before you get started so I will show you what those are. First you will need to have the root URL of any ebook from that provider. So for example in our case for Marsha Cavendish every ebook starts with this and then finishes with a number. The other thing you're going to need to have is a GIF, a graphic, um, for that vendor and you're going to need it in two sizes. One will be a 50 pixel .gif gif so a PNG and a JPEG will not do. You have to make them GIFs and I've done that in Photoshop. I just grabbed the U I just grabbed an image from the web. I brought them into Photoshop. I converted them to a GIF and I transformed the size. Um, the same is true. You need to also have a 20 pixel dot gif for that resource so those are two things that you need to have in place the third thing you need to have in place is you need to have a district level login within destiny so in my case here i am i'm at the district level but i am still not a district i'm still not functioning as a district administrator because it says new canaan high school library up here so we have to go to list all sites and then you see all the sites within your district and then you go to the district level if you don't have district level administrative rights, um, you're not going to be able to configure uh, digital content providers, which is what I'm going to show you how to do today. Um, so now we are a district level uh, cont uh, cataloger and we go to the back office and we go to configuration. And once we are here, we go to edit and you can see that we have a number of digital content providers that are listed here. We're going to go to add and here we can write Marshall Cavendish and here we can write ebook and database provider. And here we're going to put in the URL for all things Marshall Cavendish which so that we can redirect to the actual vendor. And this is where the icon comes in. Okay, so you have to assign it an icon and you can say it must be in GIF fo format and it should be 50 by 50. If it's large, it will be re larger, it will be resized. My experience is that it's really easier just to go in with the right size to begin with. Um, so here's my Marshall Cavendish logo GIF. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to save that. And then I need to assign a smaller icon that is exactly the same but 20 pixels instead. And here is my small GIF. And I'm going to open that and add that, and I can do that. Then I'm going to decide what kind of e material it is. In my case, it's an ebook. If it were a website, I would put computer file. And then you need to also know which tag in the MARC record identifies the ebook. So for us, it's 856U. Um, and the text starts with, and this is where that little URL is very important, the root URL. We need to take this information so so long as the resource has that root followed by something else in the 856 tag U, it will automatically pull that resource into the digital resources tab. And that's how this works. Once I save, it's going to say, sorry, you're going to have to choose a, a provider name with a unique name because I already have this one in here. So that was what I wanted to show how we actually configure it. And you can see we've done this for 19 different providers. Um, and then this is how it looks for the student once they log in. They're in Destiny Quest. They do their search. 
it brings them to the library titles and if we click on the digital resources tab we will have all of our other content including websites and our ABC Clio reference and our Gale reference and also our individual ebooks. Once the student clicks on the link it will take them to the distributors portal to access those resources. Now one of the things you can do, and this is really the final step, is you need to negotiate with your separate vendors and distributors to be able to make sure that if the sending URL is, de is your destiny link, that the students will not have to re-authenticate. That enables them to authenticate once within destiny, and then that's it. They access the resources. There's a caveat to that. You have to make sure that they can only access digital content so long as they are logged in users. So if they are a guest user, they should not be able to access your e-content resources. That puts you in a dangerous position in terms of your licensing agreements with your, with your providers. So it's very important that you go into the admin and you uncheck that box saying that guests cannot access electronic content. Even our free content websites, the Gutenberg collection, those are not accessible through the guest logon. I hope that answers your questions. And I look forward to speaking with you again.